cinephiles, film enthusiasts, and relaxation seekers. My name is Cinephile ASMR, and let me pose you with a question. When can you honestly say was the last time a piece of art, movie, game, book, TV show, video, you name it, has crippled you? Now, of course, I'm adding some creative licensing to that question, but truthfully, like, when can you honestly say was the last time you felt so connected and personally tied to something that you experienced that it just lingered with you? For me, I can without question say it has been with Netflix's arcane League of Legends. To a lot of you, this may sound very pretentious, and to myself included, I would agree with you, but when a particular show or, or piece of content gets such notoriety and fame and gets talked about by everyone, I can't speak on behalf of you guys, but for me, it kind of detracts me from wanting to watch it. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because it's not as authentic. I, I, it's, it's a weird thing for me. Like, I haven't even watched Tiger King, nor have I seen Squid Game. So when, of course, Arcane came rolling around and blew up, and it was in everyone's mouth, I was very weary, and I didn't know what to think going into it, especially considering it is tied to the League of Legends lore. But I seriously have not been kicking myself harder than I have waiting to watch this as long as I did, because I have not mentally left the town and city of Piltover or Zaun since I finished the show. The only way that I can properly articulate to the degree and magnitude that Arcane has left its impact on me is when I first played God of War back in 2018, when I booted that game and I played its 40-hour narrative along with the side missions, my whole perspective changed, not only similarly to how it was my introduction to the God of War universe along with Arcane's universe, but it was my opening and epiphany into realizing the capability of what gaming can do and the versatility of such. And since then, I was so diving headfirst into everything God of War and video games, and it has paved a path for me that I still feel to this day. And I feel like Arcane is just that. I feel like my 15-year-old self playing God of War for the first time right after Christmas and being in complete shock and awe. And I know that it's going to be a moment now that will impact the way I view animation, storytelling, narrative-driven stories, everything. And I cannot wait to see what boat this vessel has put me on and where that's going to take me going forward. It is almost freakishly hypnotic to the degree that Arcane has a hold on me. It, it is something that to every detail, every minutia, every aspect of this show has been discussed, drawn out, storyboarded, thought about to a T. I mean, like a freaking grain of sand in the show would probably have some sort of backstory to it. It's just such a densely packed, lore-filled story and universe, and obviously it does help that it has been tied to League of Legends, but that is something I have to get out of the way with telling you you don't have to know anything about League of Legends. In fact, I don't, and to some, that benefits it. But whether you are a League of Legends player or not, this story will hit you like a sack of bricks, like it did for me. You cannot possibly talk about Arcane without discussing the incredible attention to detail within the animation. I don't know much about animation, but this show makes me want to become an animator. It's so much attention and, and, and care handled to every single frame. I mean, you hear the term every frame of painting, but it literally could be strung up on a mural in a museum. It is fantastic. But a lot of what I love so much about it is it doesn't feel entirely polished. It is messy, it's grimy, it's gross in a lot of ways when it needs to be, but it can convey such heart aching moments and it deals within all of the characters, which I'll be getting into, with prevalent problems and health issues that are underlying throughout a lot of the show, and it weaves in all of those 
those themes very, very well, because the story itself isn't something inherently, I don't know, genre-defining. It really just deals with these warring areas you have built over this prospering city that does trade and commerce and continues to get richer, and the pockets of those that are in high positions just keep getting fatter. And then you have the undercity of Zaun, which is filled to the brim with crime and, and it's just very filthy and you have the leaders of both doing what they do best and you get to learn where that two is going to go followed by the sisters Vi and Jinx and from there I'm not going to get into anything else because I knew nothing about this show when I saw it and it wasn't until I realized that there's a three act structure nine episodes each act having three different episodes and it wasn't until that episode three mark which i think will go down in history as one of the biggest tonal shifts and jaw-dropping moments in television history when it comes to a point in episode three you realize what you've been watching is leading up to and what that means going forward and my mind was blown i had to take a break and I had to process everything. And then when I went back into the show and watched it, I was fully prepared to what I thought was that for until like five minutes. And then my mind was blown again. You will not be prepared for some of the twists, the deaths, and the directions that this show will take you on. It really is a true sentiment to the writing department here. Every character is fleshed out in such dynamic ways, and there's such history and lore to every one of them that you can see existing in the League of Legends itself or through the show. And whether it be for like brief run times, because not everyone gets the same show, but you get to understand where they're coming from. And it really does stick with those two sisters of Vi and Jinx. It really is found within that third episode progression of both characters where you realize, oh my god, this is where this show is going. And it doesn't just dabble in the idea of it, it goes for it. And then it just 180s everything that you thought about what the show was leading up to. And it was already amazing by then, so it just continually builds. But that first act, as I said, it was a three act structure, three, six, and then nine, the episodes. But that first act is some of the best television I've ever seen. And it just continually expands on it with all of these characters. And although maybe like minor nitpicks could be had, where I do wish that sometimes the characters that we were shown, especially in the city of Piltover, was given a bit more to them. I loved it. I loved every one of the characters. And that is just incredible considering the amount that they have to cap in and just put into this runtime of only nine episodes. I could talk about the animation for hours, and it really isn't just the action that gets all of the detail. It is everything, the smaller moments, the dialogue, the sweeping shots of the city, and the action. Oh my god. Oh my god. There are several moments in each of the episodes which have been ingrained into my mind, and it's through the small details and the care that is put into all of it, whether it does go through the handling of mental health issues with certain individuals, I will remain as vague as possible, or just trying to really take an enriched moment and put it to its fullest capabilities through the music. And I'm not talking about the score, because with the scores of shows and movies and video games, it is typically composed after the visuals have been done, so it works around it. I mean the soundtrack of Arcane. It is easily, if not the greatest soundtrack to a show or anything, period. I mean, you have such talents as, oh gosh, Imagine Dragons with an absolute no-skips banger, banger of an opening. If you skip it, you are not an Arcane fan. We can't ever talk, ever. <laughs> or you have Sting, one of the most heart-wrenching musical scores to a scene. Or then you have Wood Kid. There's just so many, and they're all different, and that's what I love so much about it. There's no two that sound the same, and that's really just such a testament to the grander umbrella of Arcane, which is the fact that everything is happening so quickly, but you get to love every one of these characters, their motives, their backstories, why they do what they do. 
do, how they got to the points they are. It jumps in time at points, and it's it, it, you're able to connect with it, and it's just down to that animation, the storytelling approach, and it leaves you wanting more. I have never felt this way about a show, or even like some of the stuff. It isn't like the greatest thing of all time. It's incredible. It's immaculate perfection, but I've never felt such sad, solemn nature of going about after a show, just realizing, damn, oh my god, I'm going to be waiting a couple of years for this, which I'm entirely wanting, because Netflix being Netflix, a lot of times rushes shows that blow up, but I felt like I was divorcing a loved one, and that I didn't want this divorce to happen, but I knew it was going to, and when the last episode hits, I just sat in my bed, and I was thinking about it all as the music and the credits rolled, thinking about the journey that I just went on, and this whole city and this world, and I want to play League of Legends now, I thought I would never say that, but I want to do so much, I want to learn how to animate, I want to do all these things, and I think that's something that needs to be discussed, is just the power of art when it's communally loved. I simply have not spoken to a single soul that has not liked Arcane, or at least enjoyed it for what the action has to offer, or the animation. Everyone who I've spoken with has pretty much felt on the same page as I have for different reasons, and it's that discussion and that communal adoration for art that just gets overlooked, because a lot of times in this mass technological age that we're in, it's so quickly able to just bag on shows, bring people down for what they like, or just uh, like the opposite of that, bringing people down for liking something you didn't. But when it's just communally shared, it's one of the most powerful feelings in the entire world, especially if you're in tune with art. This is what Arcane is, and it's something so fundamental, not just because it's COVID and we're relying on escapes. I mean, escapism has been there from the dawn of time, since cavemen used to know, like drawing on walls and stone. It's it's just a form of, a, of, of involving yourself in a world other than your own. And it sets such an inspirational seed in you. And I freaking adored it. I truthfully think it is a one of a kind experience, whether it be through the animation, the storytelling, the pacing, the three act structure, the soundtrack that I've played on loop. But I don't want to get too deep into it because I'm just going to get so sad again and feel like I have to wait so long for these characters to come back. But it's a true, genuine, damn testament to why I believe Arcane changes everything and puts storytelling on an entirely different level that I doubt will ever get beat. And if it does, it's going to be by itself. I just hope that it carries that beating heart, whether it be through the characters such as Vibe and jinx or just the themes and the elements that are at play the animation style that skips and, and goes about things very differently but it's all in service for an incredible story an incredible story and i cannot stress enough don't be like the cinemalius or who puts off a show because of its popularity take its popularity as a testament to what it could offer and watch the damn thing it is amazing with some profound moments that will open your eyes, ears, and tear ducts for hours. Uh, I'm not trying to speak in hyperbole. I finished this show a couple days ago. This honeymoon phase is going to be lasting for a very long time, but it's because of the beauty at display here, and you need to check it out. It is such a profoundly impactful experience for so many people. I've looked it up. I've talked to people about why they love this show, and it just means something to so many people for different reasons, and that's art, man. That's freaking art. I just loved it. I really, really loved it, and it brought me back to my God of War days, and in a, in a much bigger sense, it brought me back to being a little kid and watching Finding Nemo when I was like three or four and falling in love with that, and it just made me really reappreciate things, especially during finals week. It's a beautiful time to be alive and to experience art, and I hope you enjoyed Arcane just as much as I did. I loved it. There's so much that I could gush over going forward, but for now, just take this video as a telltale sign if you made it this far to check out an incredible work that I think you'll love. Thank you so much for sticking by. 
I know it's been like two weeks since I've last uploaded. Finals came at full swing and hit me like no other. I knew I had to prioritize and as badly as I wish if I could every day I would make a video for each of you. I would. I just knew I had to prioritize some time. And I'm going to see Spider-Man in a couple days on Wednesday, so get prepared for some couple videos about that, along with some really good stuff leading up to Christmas. Gosh, it's been such a good time. I always find myself when it's content that I'm loving, just feeling so passionate about, and just having such a nice disposition going forward. And I think that's a very strong thing, that drug of content and art just influencing how we dictate our dispositions and going about life. Come on, this that's a great moment. Live in it, embellish it. I love you guys so much, and as always, I will be here making videos for a while. Expect some good stuff on the horizon. Love you very, very much. My name is Cinefalia Samar. Remember, 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 take life one frame at a time.